Microsoft Loop can be used in so many different ways, ideation, meeting notes, or a place to also store information on your projects. But what about knowledge management or working as a knowledge base? It becomes important in the way that we work to have an area where we can collect knowledge and share it with your peers. And I believe with some new features being introduced in Microsoft Loop, that Loop now becomes a possible area for you to also build and share knowledge. And in today's tutorial, we'll look at brand new capabilities, including Loop page locking, also backlinks to get back to other Loop content, as well as new capabilities in Copilot to recap on Loop changes. We'll also take a look at security in Loop workspaces to make sure your knowledge base can work for you and sharing content in a read-only capacity. So by the end of this tutorial, you have the skills to go and build a Loop-powered knowledge base. And before we dive in, just wanted to let you know that over 90% of people that watch our videos are actually not subscribed to this channel. So if you want to keep up with the latest new capabilities, then why not hit the subscribe button? And for us, it really helps our channel grow and deliver more of this great content. So now you've hit the all important subscribe button, let's dive into Loop and build out our knowledge base. Creating a knowledge base is really easy inside a Microsoft Loop. We're going to create it as a workspace. To do that, we're heading to Microsoft Loop, then select Create New and select New Workspace. Now here you can give your workspace a name for one of your knowledge bases and also give it a header image and also share it with your colleagues by writing in their names or their email addresses so you can share this knowledge base with others. I'm going to get started by here creating a Project Green Space Knowledge Base which includes all the information that we've captured in our project so later on we can use it for reference material we can come back to it later to get a handy update. Let's go ahead and fill in this short form. With that now done, all we now need to simply do is click on the Create button to begin to create our new workspace as our knowledge base. With our knowledge base created, I've also added a few pages inside of our Microsoft Loop workspace. I have a simple page or a project overview outlining the project objectives, timeline and links to key pages. As you'll see, there are no links and we'll come back to that shortly. In addition, I have project milestones and learnings covering any of the project milestones and what we learned from those given milestones to refer back to later, stored in a simple loop table. And also some community feedback outlining what community feedback we've received as part of our project. And we can use some new loop capabilities to be able to make this even better as a new knowledge base. For example, let's go back to Project Overview, which includes an overview of the project. Now what can easily happen in Loop Pages is you can make changes by accident. For example, I could highlight this content here to copy, but simply cut it out of the page. And that page change has now been saved automatically. It can become a problem with Loop when it does that. I'll simply undo the change and now look at a new capability called Page Locking. This now locks the page in Microsoft Loop, so no further edits can now take place. And to turn this on, it's really easy. Inside of any of your Loop pages, click on the freed up menu and select Lock Page. Selecting this option here now means the page cannot be edited. In fact, let's do the same again. Highlight the content and try and cut the content out. And that doesn't have any effect on the page. But who can make changes to this page now you've locked it? Well, in theory, nobody can make any changes, not until they go over to the same option, select the freed up menu and unlock the page. And who can unlock and lock loop pages? Or well, anyone with access to the page as an editor. That could be a member in your loop workspace or someone with individual access to any of your loop pages. They can lock and unlock to also make changes to the pages. But it's really good in a knowledge base to be able to control this locking ability to prevent unnecessary changes, which is now really easy to do by clicking this option to lock pages in Microsoft Loop. And another change in Microsoft Loop that allows you to get back to content quickly as part of a knowledge base is something called backlinks. Inside of our Loop workspace, we have lots of different pages. And in our home page here, I have an area for links to key pages. As our workspace and knowledge grows, it's really important to get back to key pages when you need them without using the navigation bar on the left hand side. So what we can easily do here is drop into any of our pages on the left hand side. I'll now select this project milestones and also learnings. 
By clicking the share button and selecting page link, I can now go ahead and create a page link and also alter the security of the sharing link itself. But with this link now copied, we can head back into project overview and simply paste in the link. And it now acts as a backlink inside a Microsoft loop. These links to key pages can now be left clicked and selected to open them straight in our loop knowledge base really easily. In addition, to keep on top of all of your backlinks, you can go ahead and click on the shared locations. And in the top, you'll see here, wherever that sharing link has now been embedded. So you can easily get back to those locations quickly by left clicking to take you back to also where it's been linked to. So with loop, you can now backlink loop pages to get back to them quickly, which can work really well inside of a knowledge base. If you're enjoying seeing how Microsoft Loop can become your go-to solution when it comes to managing knowledge and sharing it with your colleagues, then why not take your knowledge on Microsoft Loop to the next level? Here at Your365 Coach, we've created a Microsoft Loop Masterclass, giving you the skills to use Loop for projects, digital note-taking, and also improve the way that you manage your meetings with note-taking capabilities, and even covering the latest in Copilot integrations. To find out more and to take your knowledge to the next level, you'll find a link in our video description below. But let's head back in to Microsoft Loop and see what else your new knowledge base can do for you. And another key point inside of any knowledge base is keeping on top of the changes that people are making. And here we can see in our community feedback that Alex, a member of our team, has made a new change inside of this knowledge. We actually see it highlighted by Microsoft Loop really handily inside of our page. As your page grows, you can also use Microsoft 365 Copilot to also let you know about any page changes. To do that, head over to the right hand side and select Copilot, and now give this a prompt of who wrote what and when on this page. And once that prompt has now been given to Copilot, we can see on the right hand side it summarizes any changes made. Now we can see here that I created the page and my added but also all the new changes that Alex made inside of our loop page. So if many of you are contributing on knowledge based pages, we'll use Copilot to summarize those changes really effectively. And you can even ask Copilot more information. Can you provide more details on what the changes that Alex made were? And you can now see them summarized on the right hand side. So with Copilot inside of loop, you can now summarize your knowledge based pages and understand what changes are made by who and when. And when you're working in Microsoft Loop as a knowledge base, you'll also want to control security and access rights. Inside of your Loop workspace on the right hand side, you can click on the share button and select workspace. In here now you can see we can have different levels of permission. It's either owner, editor, or you can remove someone from the workspace itself. This now means that you can make changes to your team where they're no longer going to be an editor, but can be also promoted to become an owner. With these changes, these owners can now even delete the workspace. So again, you may want to also change their rights to an editor. I mean, they can change content within here, but effectively it's only a single or at least a couple of people that own the workspace that make those higher level changes and can also share it with other people within the wider workspace itself. But of course, as knowledge bases, you want to also ensure people have read-only rights to specific content. And we can do that using page links or even loop components. Outside of our knowledge base, we might want to share project milestones and learnings with our wider project management team. By clicking on share, we can select page link or even loop component to bring it straight into our Microsoft Loop workspace. By selecting loop component here, we'll convert this whole page into a loop component. By selecting settings, we can also change the access rights. Rather than having anyone in the company edit this page, we'd like them only to view the changes. So for their perspective, it's read only unless access is granted as part of the wider workspace. By selecting apply, we now have this content stored as a loop component and we can share in other apps like Microsoft Teams or Outlook. So heading into our program management team, we can go ahead and start a new post and all we now need to do is paste in our loop component. We can now see that the milestones that we've achieved in Project Green Space and the lessons learned can be easily shared in a Teams post with our project management team so other project managers can understand how we've achieved these milestones and the lessons learned from the comments are also visible to them in a read-only capacity. And finally, what about files? If your files live in Microsoft Teams, you'll want to also reference them in your knowledge base, right? 
You absolutely can do that. Remember that loop itself requires files to be uploaded in different locations. It doesn't provide that file storage by default. We have a Microsoft Word file here that's stored inside of our Microsoft team. I want to bring it into our knowledge base so people can also reference. What I can now do is click on the share button and select copy link. And here I'll have anyone with a link can edit, but once again, I can click on settings and make changes. As this information is not confidential, I'll make it visible to a read-only perspective so anyone within the company can see the feedback from the community. By now copying this link, I can head back into Microsoft Loop. And in our community feedback, we have a section here which mentions the detailed report. By simply pasting in the link I've now copied, we can now see it's embedded in our Loop knowledge. And by left-clicking it, it once again opens so people who have access to the knowledge base can review this file without having access to the wider Microsoft team, we're only sharing this file in a read-only capability. So your knowledge base can have access to key files in your Microsoft Teams or SharePoint sites that your team can have access to. They'll also ensure knowledge can be shared outside of loop pages in the files that have the relevant information. So you can now see the capabilities that you can bring in to have knowledge bases created in Microsoft Loop that can be shared with your wider team or the wider business in particular scenarios. So what do you think about these new features in Microsoft Loop? Because of course we could use them across Loop without also focusing on knowledge bases. Page locking, backlinks, page recaps could be used in a variety of different scenarios across Microsoft Loop. But when I did see them, I thought they would all work really well around this idea of a knowledge base. But do let me know in the comments where you think this is gonna work for you and your team. If not, why not? I'm always interested to find out so we can cover it in our future videos. And as I mentioned at the start of this video, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and don't be part of that 90% which doesn't subscribe to this channel. By subscribing, you'll get the latest videos every single week that we publish designed to help you with the tools that you already have. And also, you'll continue to help our channel grow. And of course, if you like this video, hit the like button. And other than that, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.